You know, in communication, there's nothing we like more than a good process. Everything is a process, and it's true. There's a transactional model of, of communication and uh, that, uh, that explains how the communication process works. And, and we also have a, a process where we can explain uh, what happens during perception, when we perceive something, when we're experiencing something. So I'd like to break that process down for you a little bit so that we can understand what's happening when we engage in perception and when other people engage in perception. Uh, so um, the process of perception starts with selection. Selection just means, you know, we're identifying which stimuli we're going to pay attention to. There's so many stimuli that we're bombarded with at all times that, uh, that we, we can't pay attention to all of them. So we have to focus in on which ones we choose to. So um, selection just says, these are the stimuli. These, this is the thing I'm going to pay attention to right now. And I'm going to kind of ignore the others as much as possible. But this is what's going to receive the bulk of my attention right now. That's selection. Then we engage in what's called organization. Organization is basically just kind of categorizing things as we as we as we come across things, as we experience things. You know, when we see a, a, a dog coming towards us, we say, "That's a dog. I've seen a dog before. That's what it looks like. It's not a car. It's not a, you know, a desk. It's not you know whatever. It's it's that's a dog, right?" Um, in the same way, we we see a, a person coming at us. We know that's a person and a car. We know basically what they look like. So we're just kind of broadly categorizing things in organization. Then interpretation, we start to apply and assign meaning to those things, right? To what we're seeing. We, we start to get a little deeper and apply some sort of meaning uh, and, and infer some sort of meaning from those things. So when we see that dog coming towards us, uh, interpretation is what says, oh, I want to give that dog a hug, right? I love dogs because of my experiences with animals and dogs. And I just love dogs. And I want to, I want to pet that dog and I want to you know, play fetch with it and all that kind of stuff. But it's also the same thing that makes somebody else see that dog and think, well, I've been bitten before. I've had bad experiences. This is a, you know, caution, caution, caution. This is a fight or flight moment. Uh, we need to be aware of this dog. It's dangerous, right? It could be dangerous. So, um, so we come to these different interpretations based on our own experiences and our own knowledge and our uh, own uh, feelings about that situation. And so we all come to, you know, this is where we really start to see a lot of divergence in perception is in, in interpretations when we apply that specific meaning because we're applying it from our own perspective. We also then can engage in negotiation. And this happens a lot of times in groups, especially if you think about a group memory that you may have, like a time you went out with your friends or with, a, you know, a family story that's been told over and over again. Over time, that story will change just slightly, right? A little bit each time, and uh, and but you kind of need the uh, the agreement of the others to to do so to to say that you know well that was funny or no it wasn't funny or you're funny or you're not funny or whatever. You need the agreement of other people. You have to almost kind of negotiate these things with them, negotiate a shared understanding of what's happening. Then, right? So we can sometimes engage in that process with other people. Then, as part of this process, we're going to focus on the first three. For the, for the purposes of this video, we're going to focus on selection, organization, and interpretation, just understanding that negotiation is there at times as well. But So what I'd like to do is just show you a few pictures. I'm run through a little exercise, and we'll, we'll show you how this works, uh, because these things happen just like that, like the snap of a finger. Like we move through all three of these stages, and we get from selection to interpretation just so quickly. So let me, let me show you some examples here. So take a look at this picture for me, if you would. Just take a look at this picture. What are you seeing? What are you seeing? This is one of those pictures, if you haven't figured it out already, that has a couple of different images in it. It's kind of a, a you know, it's got those dual images in it. So some of you may be seeing uh, a young woman, what we would describe as a young woman looking off into the distance, right? You're only seeing a part of her face. Uh, other people may be seeing uh, an older woman. And uh, and you can see her face in profile. You can see fully half of her face. Um, it just looks like an older woman there. Some of you may be seeing both, and that's okay. Uh, there's nothing wrong with you if you're only seeing one or the other. Or if you're seeing both, that's that's not the point. Uh, but there there are multiple images here, right? So, um, but so for those of you, if, if you're seeing the older woman, let's let's take that as an example. Tell me about her. What what can you tell me about this older woman? First of all, we're calling her older. We don't even know that, right? But but first, I mean, so selection says pay attention to this image. Right. Selection says, pay attention to this image. This is what I'm seeing. This is what we're paying attention to right now. Organization says, that's a person. It's not a dog. It's not a rabbit. It's not a car. It's not a building. It's not a table. It's not a desk. It's whatever. It's a person. Right? I've seen a person before, and that's what it looks like. So organization says, okay, this is a person. And then interpretation starts to take over and tell us about that person. 
and and so is this an older woman and what does older mean the, the older i get the less old she seems to me because i'm getting closer to her age right but uh so but some people would describe her as an older woman some people say witch when i ask that question some people say she's a witch and then i ask why and they say well she's got a bump on her nose and a big nose and that makes her look like a witch she just looks like a witch right she looks like a witch some people just say well she looks sad um, and looks like she's, you know, maybe in mourning, maybe she's at a funeral. Uh, but wait, and the truth is we don't know any of this, right? This is all interpretation. That's where we're at with interpretation. We start to find individual meaning. We make meaning out of what we're experiencing, what we're seeing, what we're hearing, what we're tasting, so forth. We make meaning out of those things through interpretation. But everybody's going to end up maybe on a slightly different page. Even if we agree that there's an old woman and a young woman, we would probably maybe disagree about little, you know, details of what we're seeing there. Let me give you another example. Take a look at this picture, this, this image. You may have seen this one before. It's again, it's another one of those dual images. So if you're, if you're seeing um, both things, then you're seeing, you know, a, a kind of a cup or, or a chalice in the middle there and uh, in the black. And then in the, the, the outline of that in the white, you can kind of see two faces, especially toward the bottom, the bottom half of the image. There's two faces kind of facing one another. And uh, so you know, we could take this either way. What do, you know, pe some people call it a chalice, some people call it a cup, some people call it a vase. Uh, and and so you know, what is it? I, don't, I mean, I don't know. It's in the picture. It's a kind of up to interpretation, right? Selection says pay attention to this picture. Organization says that's a container of some sort. You know. uh, and then interpretation says, well, that's a chalice. Obviously, it's you know, it's like out of the Arthurian legend or, you know, something like that, or it's a vase. You know, if you're a florist, maybe you see a vase. If you're a history buff, maybe you see a chalice from old days. You know, it just depends on the person. We get into interpretation or we get into those faces. What are those faces doing? Are they getting ready to kiss? Are they getting ready to fight? Are they just staring at each other? Are they, you know, is it two men or is it two women? Or is it a man and a woman? Is it, we don't know. I don't know, but interpretation takes over and where our interpretation goes leads us down these roads based on our experiences and our, our own history and our knowledge and so forth. We'll all come to a slightly different interpretation probably of each of these things. Okay. Okay. Those were some silly examples. Let me just show you some pictures real quick, actual pictures of people. Right? Okay. I'm going to go through these fairly quickly. I just want you to take a quick glance and, uh, and see what you can see about them. Just gather some general impressions, you know, so what do we see there? What are we seeing? So the first three were kind of, you know, fairly well dressed, right? First three were fairly well dressed as opposed to this last one. The last person here gets a lot of comments about, you know, he kind of looks homeless. Some people say he looks like a gym teacher. Sometimes I get that, but most people say, yeah, he kind of looks a little, a little rough, a little disheveled, you know? So if you saw this person, how would you react differently than if you saw those other people that I showed you? Were the first three people that were dressed in, you know, suits or nicer outfits. How would you, if you saw them walking down the street toward you or you were walking toward them, how would you react differently? Would you react differently at all? Um, and, you know, so um, what would we do? Well, it may surprise you to know, and some of you may have figured this out or may have seen this already, but the first person that you saw and this person are actually the same person that they that they brought in. This is an actual, he is, was a homeless person. A homeless man and they brought him in and and you know, cleaned him up a little bit groomed him and and combed his hair and and gave him a suit to put on um, to kind of make a point you know the longer i leave this picture up there the more you'll begin to see that there are some ways you could spot that and maybe did spot that the first time around um that you know that, uh, that would be able to to see that maybe this picture wasn't quite right but uh, uh the point is our our our, our you know through selection organization, interpretation, then, you know, leads us to these different impressions, these people. Selection said, pay attention to these pictures. Organization said, well, that's a person. These are people. I'm showing you pictures of people. But then interpretation said, okay, that's a business person. That's a business person. This is a homeless person. And what, you know, what does that mean to you? For some of us, it means, you know, we cross the street because we don't want to get hassled and we're worried about safety and things like that. For other people, it means, you know, you get out your wallet and you give them something or you offer to uh, bring them some food or something and just, you know, do what you can. Uh, some people just keep walking. Don't do either. You don't cross the street, but you don't stop either. You just keep going. It, it just depends on the person. It depends on where you're at in life. It depends on your interpretation of the situation, your comfort level, all that kind of stuff. Right? So 
Um, so we go through the same thing with people, though, selection, organization, interpretation, and it does happen just like that, just as quick as you can snap your fingers. We move through all three of those um, those parts of the process, selection, organization, and interpretation. I mentioned before that there's, you know, those are the steps, selection, organization, interpretation, negotiation. And, uh, and you know, if we were walking down the street together, then we could negotiate kind of what, you know, what that experience was, what that person was, how we should have handled it and all that kind of stuff. But um, again, the first three are what we were focusing on in this video. And, uh, and this is something we do, you know, millions of times a day, probably when we're perceiving things, every time we, we engage in perception, but remember, so is somebody else and their interpretation is going to be based on their own experiences, their own life, their own knowledge, their own, all of that kind of stuff. Right? So uh, be aware of that, that, that interpretation may vary greatly depending on your frame of reference, depending on your background. If you have questions about the perception process or anything else related to perception, please feel free to email me. I'd be happy to answer any questions that I can in that way. In the meantime, I hope this gives you kind of a new perspective or understanding on what happens when we perceive, uh, and especially the understanding that when we get to that last section, that interpretation, things are going to vary based on on uh, on your own outlook, your own history, your own frame of reference. Then, so uh, take that into consideration the next time you wonder, wow. Well, that's not how I see it. How could that person possibly come to that different of, of an interpretation? That's well, because it's all part of the perception process.